Okay. Is this the first? Uh, yeah, yeah, this is our first exchange from the seat. You're Thank right. You. Hey, actually, this is your good side. Thank Let's you. <laughs> I knew you had a one-liner. I thought it was a terrible one. But I actually moved to the left. Still. Yeah. Um, my right, your left. It's very confusing. You're right, my left. Um, I wanted to follow on Nora because if you basically have this Boehner plan that you say can't get through the Senate, and you've got a read plan that the Republicans don't think can get through the Senate or the House, and you're saying we want to compromise, what was the point of giving a primetime address to the nation without an Obama plan and say, Neither of these other plans okay. can work. Where I understand the idea that there is not an Obama plan is uh, there's like not. There's point not number one. one, on one there's not one on is point number one on the on the talking points issued by the Republican Party. I get no, 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 it. No, okay. no, 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 no. Show us the plan. Well, it's not a talking point. That's unfair. We have well, said from the, the be first of all, the president put forward in detail his principles at George Washington principles. University. Right. right. That's not quite a, a lot of detail. The president stood before you. I can't remember if you were here Friday night. Some of you weren't because you cut out early, but a lot of you were. And he put forward in detail, with numbers, what he's willing to do. He then referred from the podium to the fact that White House officials would be briefing in detail what our plan is. The purpose of putting forward a plan on paper, our interest in this has been to get a compromise, to get a deal. It has not been to politically position ourselves, say, with things that uh, appeal to our base, maybe pieces of legislations that we know can't pass, but it'll be, you know, greeted warmly by certain constituencies. Our goal, and the reason why the negotiations have been conducted the way they have been conducted, is because we want a result. That's the way the president has, and it is simply not the case. Uh, you know, the, member, the senior the members of the House right Republican right. leadership can open their desk drawer, pull out reams of paper that represent the president's proposals and his counter proposals and his counter counter proposals and his understanding that they need more of this and that he would like more of that. There is plenty of detail. But if the, even the president gave numbers on Friday night, White House aides were saying last night he was giving this speech to the nation because most Americans were not paying attention until last night. So even if he gave these numbers on Friday night, they have not, the American people were not paying attention Friday night by your own estimation. Well, I, so why didn't he say last night, here are the nine things that I support. Here are the numbers. Here's what I want to do on taxes. And, and just well, lay it out and say, call your congressman the, with this, not with this the vague. Point, the point, I mean, you, you, the fact is you, you, you address the nation only so often on prime time. The president has been out here with an unbelievable amount of regularity talking to you, talking to the American people throughout this process. He has put forward in great detail. I mean, you know, if you guys haven't talked about it on air or put it in your newspapers or on online, uh, then you should because the detail is there. Secondly, he needed to talk to the American people last night because uh, for a good reason, because they have their own lives to worry about and they count on Washington, not always to take care of everything, but to take care of the big things, like making sure we don't default on our obligations. And he needed to talk to the American people, to those Americans who haven't been paying close attention, to let them know where this stands and why it's so important and why the risk is there. Congress doesn't act, and we believe it will. Uh, something that has never happened before in our history could happen, and it would be very bad indeed. That's why he had to address the country and why he uh, wanted to explain to them his view that compromise is so necessary. One other quick thing. I think on CBS radio this morning, Dan Pfeiffer said that if Congress does not act by August 2nd, this could lead to a depression. Is that your position, that we might have a depression in America? You know what, I, depression is a, you know, how you, what I know, what economic uh, uh, experts have said is that, and, and again, Republican and Democrat, Jim Baker, Ronald Reagan, all sorts have said that a default on our obligations would produce an economic calamity. How that, how you define that? obviously depends on, on how long it lasts and what the ongoing implications of that would be. We don't believe it's come to pass. You know, you know economic calamity is plenty scary, but, and but we should not week, even entertain that. But over the weekend, Democrats are saying there's going to be a Boehner drop if there's no action. Asian markets are going to crash on Sunday. It didn't happen. American markets didn't crash on Monday. Okay. Thankfully, they have not Ed, crashed on. I'm, but I so want to move on, but you should go on the air and tell your viewers there's nothing to worry about. That's 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 one approach. Chuck. Jay, why not release